clients. The main way most of us freelance designers make our money. But a problem that I've found a lot of designers having is how do we how do we talk to clients? What what are the right questions to ask? That the right question and to try and help solve that problem eh, I'm going to be talking to you guys today about some really key questions to ask your design clients so without further ado let's fire in adieu adieu that's a goodbye in German now, usually there's a couple of types of clients that will allow you to tailor your questions to them. And it's clients that either have branding and an identity system already in place. So they've already got their logo design, a lot of their assets as well. They're already established. The second type, probably guessed it, clients that have never really interacted with a designer before. They don't know the process and they don't really have any form of brand identity set up yet. Now, a little tip here before I get right into it. Try not to ask direct questions like, do you need a logo design? It looks like your website needs some updating. Would you like me to do that? The way that we want to ask these questions are ones where the client themselves answers their own problem and they get to the root of their own problem. We are merely a guide to get there and then we can create some really cool logos and assets and stuff, but we'll get onto that. Now, the client might have mentioned that they needed a logo update or an update to something, maybe a rebrand, maybe a, you know, a website update. You might actually find during the call or during the meeting that your client actually has a marketing problem, that they maybe have a problem in their product or their service being seen. To start, you'll want to find out more about the client. What, what are their goals? What are some of the issues that they feel that they are facing? You may want to ask them, what's what's the challenge here? What is it you're looking to accomplish? What, what do you like or dislike about your current branding and identity? Once you've got an idea of what the goal is, you're kind of able to work backwards from there and then set either clear goals or clear milestones in the process that you can then implement into the project. Taking it as an example, if it is a logo that the client is after, you're gonna maybe want to ask a little bit more about what it is that they're after. Like for example, what do you hope the impact will be of a logo redesign or a rebrand? What, what do you hope to get out of it? What value do you see in doing this? Have you worked with designers in the past? What was that like? If the client has not worked with a designer before and maybe they've created something via you know, Canva, maybe they've gotten an artist off of Fiverr to create a very rudimentary logo and they're looking, looking to produce something a bit more professional, maybe sit with them for a little while, take them through the entire process of what it takes for you to design them a logo and each of the milestones throughout that, going from the research stage to concept, to refinement, to presentation and beyond. And to be honest with you, I think my favorite part is the mock-up stage because I then get to see all of the really cool designs that I've done almost physically on things and on products. Maybe it's a notebook or a billboard or something like that. Now, you will want to mention the scope, the deliverables of the project, and probably most importantly, the deadline of the project and also the budget and the money involved because ultimately you don't want to go through the entire call with your client explaining you know the problems that they're facing what they may want to do taking the project forward and then at the very end you mention what your rates are what your day rate or what the project rate is and then they say wow that's really out of our scope our budget is actually x and then you can't unfortunately take the project forward because you're too expensive for them or they can't afford it. Try and mention money as early on in the call as possible or even get the money and the budget sorted out beforehand so that then when it comes to the call or the meeting that you're having, you can just get the ball rolling on the project and you don't need to worry about it. So I would recommend doing that. But if you can't do that, 
try and mention it as soon as possible in the call and maybe say, uh, listen, I understand that, you know, you're looking to do this project. If I put, say, a £5,000 uh, budget on the table for this project, is that something you can work with? Which is what I've done in the past. And sometimes clients say, yep, that's totally fine. 5000 is fine with us. That's a good budget rate for us for this project. Some clients say, no, I maybe can't do that. Maybe it's only 1500 Maybe it's only half that at 2500 And from there, what you want to do is take the scope of the project down to meet the budget. So instead of maybe doing an entire rebrand with lots of social assets and you know an entire style guide as well, Maybe it's just the logo in the style guide that you're doing. Maybe it's just the logo and some cool assets for now that you're doing. But with that, you've began to develop a relationship with your client. And from there, if your client's looking for anything and you say, hey, if you need something else, give me a shout. I'm going to be, be able to knock a bit off uh, the price because you're coming back to me and I'm retaining a client. And ultimately, everybody will be happy with that. But... That's probably more for another video for me to delve in deep to talking about money as a freelancer. And that will probably be the title. Another good question to ask is, is it just a logo design that you're after? Taking that as an example, is it just a logo design you're after? Or are you after an entire rebrand of your identity system with all the bells, all the whistles, all that good stuff? The thing is as well, Sometimes it is just the logo that your client's after. They're not looking for any strategy. They're not looking for any extras. They're just looking for a logo design to get them started. And they've got the budget there for it. And I think, honestly, that's totally fine. It's totally fine to just want a logo design. Now, to set expectations as well, you might want to ask, what kind of style are you looking for? Is it something similar to the branding that you've already got or are you looking to go in an entirely new direction and have a clean slate moving forward think practically as well where will these designs be used and where will the product be distributed if for example it is a product and packaging design that they're maybe after consider the professional boundaries as well how do you prefer to communicate is it email is it call is it text message is it whatsapp is it MySpace? It's, it's probably not MySpace, but I would re definitely recommend calls and emails. You can get uh, even calls. Calls is probably my number one method of communication purely because you can get a hold of something much quicker uh, in a call rather than sending a text message. And then within 30 seconds, you've got the information that you need and then you can kind of carry on with the project. And ask as well, what file types are you after? Is it PNG? Is it JPEG? Is it SVG? Is it PDF? Is it actual AI and PSD files that you're after because then you're looking to print? Or are you looking just for some template uh, files as well? Now, these are just a few questions that I've fired your way to ask your clients. Obviously, it'll depend on what they're after, what their needs are, the size of the client project as well. It all depends, but what I have done is I've compiled a document that you guys can download. It's linked in the description that will be able to help you guys ask the right questions for your client. But with that list of questions as well, it really helped me with pretty much all of my clients and I still use it now with current clients that I have. And it gives me a good boost of confidence because the clients trust me and they begin to understand not only the questions I'm asking, but they begin to understand their own problems. And helping a business owner get to the root of their problems is what we do. And it's a great help to them. It's a boost in confidence for us as well and the knowledge that we have and our ability to help our clients. But that's it from me today. If you feel like this helped you, feel free to download the document, take a look at the questions, or if you've got some client questions that you feel are really valuable, drop them down in the comments below. And feel free to like and subscribe too. It is free and any support is hugely appreciated. I'll catch you later. Have a good one, guys. See ya.